our, our, our thesis was uh, Britain borrowed lots of money from banks and came under lots of debt. So it made sense to, uh, to them to taxate the colonists and to help pay the debts. Uh, the many acts of taxation were designed to repay the government's loans. And no money went to colonists with efforts causing rage against the governors and thus leading to the American Revolution. So basically we, we have we come up with uh, four acts, the Sugar Act, Tea Act, Townsend Act, and Stamp Act to support how the how Britain taxed the colonists. So the Sugar Act, this is an act that um, reduced the tax on molasses um, from six pence to three pence per gallon. So basically when it reduced the, the price they expected the colonists to now, they have to pay um, the tax every time instead of trying to bribe the British or try to try to get out of paying their taxes. Um, when the Sugar Act was put in place, British courts were made, so if you didn't pay your tax, um, the colonists would be taken to court and they would have punishments for not paying. Uh, the Sugar Act greatly improved the British con economy. Uh, they banned all legal trade between New England and any, and any other country. So now trade had to stay within Britain and the colonies. Um, they can no longer trade with the French, Dutch, or Spanish, any other European country. Um, the Sugar Act has seizures of cargoes, which violate any rules, so if they did uh, trade with other countries, their, their cargoes would be uh, stolen from them, and the British would have control of them now. Um, the new act reduced the use of bribery intimidation towards the British, so they, the French were forced to pay their taxes. Um, also, the Sugar Act made foreign products such as wine, coffee, and printed objects uh, more expensive by putting more tax on them. So. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Tea Act. Uh, oh, the Tea Act was an act by the British Parliament uh, to help struggling companies and the East India India Company, uh, a giant, uh, I think country, right? Uh, this company, a giant trading mon uh, monopoly, uh, to survive by cutting massive excesses of tea they had. To further stimulate its uh, sales and build, the East India Company or the British Company, the British government, now held by Frederick Lord North. The Prime Minister of Great Britain offered the company a series of rebates and tax exemptions. This made, uh, made it possible for them to avoid uh, merchants and smugglers. The money that would be raised, the taxation would be, uh, would be used to help the colonist, uh, colonist government. Many colonists didn't like the way Britain taxed the colonists, uh, taxation without representation which led into a prot uh, protest where colonists destroyed more than 300 chests of tea. The protest uh, became a key event to, to the American Revolution, and it's also called the Boston Tea Party. And I have a quote here that says, uh, Tea once preserved uh, of the wealthy had now become a dream consumed by all social classes in England and the colonies. And this is like, only the rich people could drink tea before, but due to like, what happened with the tea that they had so much tea, they had to make it so cheap so everyone could drink it, so they could sell all the tea. In 1767, uh, the cabinet chief financial minister of England, Charles Townshend, designed a new set of taxes uh, that would help repay the governors and the judges um, working in the colonies. Uh, the quote I have for that is, Townshend pers uh, persuaded Parliament to impose new taxes on goods imported into the colonies and to create a new board of customs co um, commissioners to collect them and suppress smuggling. Uh, there was a lot, there were a lot of objection towards this act, but either way, there were some colonists that kept the ban, they reimposed the ban in 1768. All the tax money went directly to the British government, and none went to the colonists, which angered them, which angered them because 
um, they mostly did all the farming and all the work to get the imports in. Uh, that led to a boycott and also led to John Dickinson writing the famous letters from a farmer in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, even though he himself was a lawyer and was not a farmer, but he grew up in a tobacco plantation. Uh, there were several essays all talking about how the original rights of Englishmen fit fine for the colonists and how only the most educated of the community participated in debates while quoting Shakespeare up to Montesquieu. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to talk about the Stamp Act, um, which Rachel and Brendan talked a little bit yesterday. Um, the Stamp Act happened when Parliament's um, attempt, to, uh, attempt to raise money from direct taxes in the colonies rather than through the regulation of trade. It strained the relationship with the colonies, and that many colonies felt that Parliament violated their liberty, and it was their anger that triggered the Stamp Act. So, what did the Parliament do that made um, colonies so angry? And here's the quote: "And uh, the Act required all sorts of printed material produced in the colonies: newspapers, <coughs> books, court documents, commercial papers, land deeds, etc." Carried a stamp act, uh, a stamp purchased from authorities. So Patrick Henry, who's from um, Virginia, was famous for his theory against the British tyranny. Uh, submitted a series of resolutions that denied Parliament the right right to tax colonies to his colonies assembly. So when people angry, they act. The most famous resistance was took place in Boston were opponents of the Stamp Act calling themselves the Sons of Liberty. <clears throat> the mob paraded through the streets which uh, with an act of Andrew Oliver, Boston's uh, stamp distributor, which they hanged from the Liberty Tree and beheaded before ransacking Oliver's home. To sum it up, I have another quote. The prospect of a uh, British army permanently stationed on American soil and along the many colonies by imposing the stamp tax without col uh, colonial consent, Parliament directly ch challenged the authority of local elites, who, through a seventh day control, had established their power over the rising and spending of money. They were ready to defend this authority in the name of liberty.